Hamster. Remember that one time we reviewed five Pokemon games at once? Oh, yeah, that title was longer than the intro to Skyward Sword. Want to do it again? No! It's a Patreon request! <laughs> Come on, they love Pokemon! It's so much work! And it's efficient! You love efficient! So efficient! Succumb to its allure! I remember back in the land before time, we used to call Pokemon Generation 2, Pokemon 2. We didn't have any internet in order to talk or learn about the new games like we do today. Internet? You mean that place with all the creepy Rule 34 art when you just try to Google a Pokemon's name? Poor Gardevoir. DeviantArt wanted you to have legs so badly, Game Freak eventually made it canon. They made porn canon. The only way we could share new information was at school or at the playground. You mean where all those pedophiles hang out taking pictures of kids? Sometimes the first time you'd even see a new Pokemon would be in a movie or in the trading card game. Oh, you mean that empty aisle at Target that scalpers throw elbows to clean out like it's Black Friday in order to exploit collectors and children around the world. I hate people. Since this is another quintuple episode, I'll be focusing on the original 2000 Game Boy Color games, Gold, Silver, and Crystal. Which leaves me with the 2009 DS remakes, Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Back in 2000, we didn't ask for Pokemon innovations nearly as much as we simply wanted more Pokemon. And with a hundred new monsters to collect on top of the original 150 in brand new region to explore, Gen 2 hit all the right buttons. Luckily, the remakes capitalized on this nostalgia, making only the original 251 Pokemon appear until the postgame. One huge new feature was implementing an internal clock so that you could find different Pokemon in various places based on the real life time of day. This was incredibly cool for adding an extra bit of immersion and replay value incentive where you could share your own personal discoveries with your friends. And by the time the remakes rolled around, we had access to Cerebi, an incredibly helpful online database that forever transformed Pokemon and all of its features into an obsessive math game. The third version of the game, Crystal, was a definitive update to Gold and Silver, adding new animated sprites, the choice of being a girl for the first time, and with an all new in-depth story involving the legendary Suicune. And for the record, Heart Gold and Soul Silver were primarily based on Crystal, however, opting to retain the original version exclusives while still holding on to Crystal's updates. So assume that any other added innovations were also featured here as well. One of those innovations was the new Poke Gear, allowing you to listen into in game radio stations, call various characters, and even rematch trainers. Because cell phones were so hip and funky fresh at the turn of the millennia, you feel me, my dudes? Speaking of outdated tech, Heart Gold Soul Silver came bundled with the Poke Walker, a glorified Tamagotchi device allowing you to walk with your transferred Pokemon in the real world with a step counter, gathering XP, uncovering items, and even challenging and capturing new Pokemon to send back to your game. I admittedly really love this idea. <laughs> Gen 2 also brought us the Bug Catching Contest, a creative event based on catching powerful wild Pokemon for prizes that we sorely need more of the like in modern Pokemon, expanding on the game's core mechanics. We also got special Pokeballs crafted from collecting apricorns, all with various effects and designs. Although due to some shoddy programming, some of these Kurt Balls either had the wrong effects or straight up didn't work. But the remakes obviously fixed that, and went on to add fan favorites like the Safari Zone, in addition to allowing post-game players to access nearly all modern Pokemon at the time, including several legendaries not even native to the region. For the first time ever, you could breed and hatch Pokemon eggs, use move tutors, chase down legendary roaming Pokemon, give Pokemon items to hold, and of course encounter the incredibly rare, alternately colored, shiny Pokemon. And possibly the most popular update in the remakes is in allowing the first Pokemon in your party to follow behind you in the overworld. Every single alternate form, gender difference, and yes, even shiny sprite from all four directions are allowing you to interact and journey with your teammates on a whole new and incredibly endearing level. You want huge, exciting features? How about after beating the Elite Four, you travel east of your hometown and discover that Gen 1's entire map of Kanto was connected to Johto the entire time, where you can challenge and collect eight more badges, re-challenge a stronger Elite Four, and a secret final boss, the protagonist of the first game, Trainer Red, with his fittingly OP team. And to make things even more epic, defeating Red actually gives you end credits alongside beating the Elite Four both times, making for three endings. 
and I don't personally consider a Gen 2 Pokemon game complete until you've dethroned Red's level 80 plus team atop Mount Silver. And get this, people in this world invented a fully functioning time machine and are so dedicated to Pokemon that it never occurs to them to use it for anything other than trading and battling with themselves in the past. I'm not even joking. That's their reason for Gen 1 multiplayer compatibility. Well, since the remakes were released after Gen 4, they inherited all modern gameplay features and updates like the physical special split, quality of life features, as well as Wi-Fi connectivity. That got shut down in 2014. However, don't forget that local wireless still works. You gotta mention that weird Pokemon Olympics thing? Yeah, so the Pokathlon is a series of touch-based mini-games you can play with your Pokemon to compete for some pretty valuable prizes like TMs and Elemental Stones of Choice. The games themselves are just meh, but we gotta justify those overworld sprites and the new touchscreen, don't we, Nintendo? Before we move on, I gotta talk about your mom. Don't you bring my mother into this! In-game mom! At the beginning of the game, she asks you if you'd like her to help you manage your money. <laughs> oh god, this! And if you accept, a percentage of all money you earn will go to your mom like a bank you can access with no interest. Except she will occasionally spend some of your money on items that she thinks you need. Stop touching my money, Mom! You have a problem! Yeah, unless you like backtracking for the rest of your wallet and unnecessary family drama, this is a pointless deal. Shut up, Mom! I'm 10 years old! I can handle my own finances! Gosh! Gen 2 looks identical to the first games. Except it's in color! And the remakes look like Gen 4 graphics except with all the slowdown and graphical hiccups. The color was what really made this game pop. You could easily see if it was day or night, as well as identify the new differently colored shiny Pokemon, like the red Gyarados you get to encounter at the Lake of Rage. But oh boy, do the remakes have some stellar sprite art. The Pokemon characters and animations are honestly my favorite in the entire series. Oh man, and that intro cinematic was so cool back then. There wasn't a single time I didn't watch it play out in full before booting up the game. I swear, I could probably spend hundreds of dollars making Perler bead art from this game if I had the time or or money. I need to immortalize my shiny collection. Also, this gen brought us Shuckle, and therefore it's the best one. I cannot argue with such irrefutable evidence. Well, obviously that's undeniable, as Shuckle is simply the greatest. Can we keep talking about Shuckle for the rest of this video? Don't push your luckle. Uh, go shuck yourself. So this time- Come on, don't even- The Team Rocket's back and- No, no, that's not a story. Okay, so they're just trying to contact Giovanni and kind of fail to even revitalize the group, but yeah, that goes nowhere. Well, you, uh, awaken a legendary bird. Which makes perfect sense in gold when Ho-Oh descends on the nearby tower, but in silver, someone has to run out and claim that they saw something strange miles away in the distance, deep underwater in a cave blocked by a raging whirlpool. Yeah. Uh, nothing really comes of your rival. Nothing really comes from exploring Kanto. Nothing really comes of collecting all the badges. Or Pokemon, for that matter. Come on, there's never a good story in Pokemon. That's not the fault of the franchise, but its creative team. A good story can be told in any game, but that requires effort, and Game Freak chose otherwise. It's funny how people expect monumental storytelling in JRPGs, Unless they're playing Pokemon, then all of a sudden expect and accept Amateur Hour. Even a thousand monkeys smacking typewriters indefinitely will eventually compose Shakespeare. So I'm still patiently waiting on the monkeys at Game Freak to accidentally do the same. Music is absolutely vital in a game that you plan on playing for a long time, and especially one where you explore various locales throughout your journey. Well, oh boy, does this soundtrack absolutely knock it out of the park! even on Game Boy. And those new remixes are all so wonderfully arranged. You can even switch back to the original retro soundtrack after acquiring a late game item. Every single city, route, and battle is so well crafted to set the feeling of your environment without getting on your nerves with memorable melodies. I just love it. I think I have more music saved on my computer from these games than all other Pokemon generations combined. Music is something that builds a tremendous amount of character in games. And what this game lacks in story, the atmosphere and music overwhelm it with life-giving character. And it direly lacks. We know! If you're into Pokemon, then I can't recommend Generation 2 enough. Pokemon doesn't get any better than this. Or at least I'm still waiting for that to change. I keep a detailed video game resume, logging my achievements and estimated playtimes for every game I've ever played. 
and these five together account for a tremendous amount of that time, with Heart Gold holding the record for the most amount of hours I've ever spent in a single game with an obscene 2,215 hours. That's more time than you spent in high school and college combined! Uh, well, that's just one game. I also have my resume calculate all my playtimes from each console together and convert it into total hours, days, and even years. Which just broke two, by the way. Two years?! Non-stop?! No food?! No sleep?! No breaks whatsoever?! That's far more time than I've spent in school from kindergarten all the way up through graduate school. How's that for an education? And the number one game on that list? Yes. Heart Gold. Shiny hunting alongside those many playthroughs adds up fast, and I'm still looking for new ways to play this game again. What about a Pokewalker only challenge? Don't tempt me! Or maybe you could just curb your appetite by rewatching our entire 115 episode Heart Gold series, where we exploit the ability Cute Charms pour fourth gen programming into altering the shiny Pokemon rate up to a whopping 20% and complete a massive challenge of hunting and collecting all available Pokemon across the game as shinies before progressing with each area, irredeemably palpable yet obligatory shameless plug! The positive gamer in me gives the retro Pokemon Gold, Silver, and Crystal an 8 out of 10. These classics are still a great time to revisit for tickling the nostalgia on either Virtual Console or traditional Game Boy and cartridge. That is, if your battery still works, which mine don't. The critical gamer in me has to give Pokemon Gold, Silver, and Crystal an honest 6 out of 10. These impressive Game Boy Color releases were amazing at the time, but haven't aged particularly well. But the positive gamer in me was smitten enough with Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver to give them the precious 10 out of 10. These remakes faithfully captured the best of the Game Boy's Gem 2, and spruced it up with the finest sprite art, music, and gameplay features the series has ever been blessed with to date. And the critical gamer in me finds the DS remakes Heart Gold and Soul Silver to both deserve an incredible 9 out of 10. I nearly caved with this score, but held back that perfect 10 solely for the lack of any real effort in the story department to hold up the remainder of these titles, which, admittedly, have a heart of gold. But what do you think? And what do you think is the best Pokemon game? And tell us how your positive and critical sides rate Pokemon Gold, Silver, Crystal, Heart Gold, and Soul Silver in the comments below. The best Pokemon game is the one that lets you feel like a kid again openly playing with reckless abandon. It's whatever can connect you to that carefree world the most. And for me, it's this game. But if you won't even allow yourself the chance to let go of the stress of your daily life and just play, then you're only playing with yourself. Special thanks to Crystal from Patreon for requesting this episode. And to be fair, she only actually requested the game Crystal at kind of ironic, and I kind of convinced Hamster to turn this into another quintuple thing because, you know, efficiency. I love efficiency. But thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe for more, and use the links in the description to nominate your own episode. Thank you to our Patreon members, Atomic Thomas, Cameron, Arrow, Rowan, Erica, Shyam, Minya, Sid, Squad Fam, and Crystal. Boop!